Good Tuesday afternoon. Dark clouds right now rolling over the capital city. Warm though, 72 degrees right now as we continue to warm into the 70s. But still, cloud cover and scattered showers across central Mississippi. We have a nice little downpour moving towards Braxton and Star here in southern Rankin County. That's about to cross 49. As well as clusters of downpours and showers in Forest and near Polkville. Montrose pushing off towards the east and a downpour near Redwood in northern Warren County. I'm tracking more widespread severe thunderstorms for tomorrow coming up. 12 News at Noon starts right now. What kind of a person breaks into McDonald's to steal a donation box? Jackson police are on the trail of a burglar. Also, a tornado in central Tennessee claims the lives of at least 21 people. We'll have a daylight look at the destruction left behind in Nashville. Plus, Super Tuesday underway with voters in 14 states heading to the polls. The race for the Democratic nomination is really getting interesting. Good afternoon. I'm Andrew Harrison. Breaking news today for you at noon. Democratic nominee Joe Biden is coming to the capital city. A staffer confirms to 12 News that the former vice president will be in Jackson on Sunday. Exactly where and what time of day has yet to be announced. Watch for real-time updates at WJTV.com. Well, Jackson police are investigating a shooting in an apartment complex. Police say a man and a woman were both transported to the hospital for treatment of injuries. The shooting occurred just after 8 o'clock this morning on Hospital Drive. Police say the shooting happened after an argument with another man. The victim's conditions are unknown at this time. Jackson police also investigating an early morning break in at a McDonald's over on Woodrow Wilson. We're told the perpetrator broke in through a glass door and stole the donation box. The drive through is open, but the lobby was closed for a while this morning to clean up the broken glass. No official word yet on suspect information or possible surveillance video of that incident. We have a 12 News update on the murder of two Alcorn State University students who were killed in Claiborne County. Authorities have made another arrest in this case. Deputies tell us 45 year old Derry Dunmore taken into custody. Dunmore is the stepfather of the suspect, Jarrell Davis. He's charged with accessory after the fact and tampering with evidence. It's not clear if bond has been set yet for Mr. Dunmore. And here's another 12 News update. The Office of State Auditor Shad White has returned more than $1.3 million to the state taxpayers. According to the auditor's office, those funds were returned last month after they were misused or stolen, involving several town officials in Pelahatchie. The mayor of Aberdeen, Maurice Howard, the former chancery clerk of Humphreys County, Lawrence Browder, the former town clerk of Raleigh, Helen Bounds, and the commissioners of the Town Creek Master Water Management Board. State Auditor released a statement that reads in part, since coming into office in July of 2018, the Auditor's Office has identified more than $5 million in stolen or misspent public money and has now recovered and returned over $4 million back to the taxpayers where it belongs. Auditor White goes on to say, February was our most successful month yet for returning money to the public during my tenure, and I look forward to more months like this in the future. Well, the search continues for a Madison County girl who's been missing for six years now. Investigators say two-year-old Myra Lewis was last seen at a home in Camden in March of 2014. Authorities spent days looking for her, but they had trouble turning up any evidence. Here's a photo digitally aged to show what Myra would look like now at eight years old. The FBI is still offering a reward of up to $20,000 for information regarding her whereabouts. If you have any information, please contact the Madison County Sheriff's Department. Well, U.S. Attorney Mike Hurst announces a $130,000 grant to help fight crime here in Mississippi. The grants were given under Project Eject, Project Safe Neighborhoods, and Project Guardian. Those programs are geared to help reduce violent crime across the country. Jackson received more than $70,000. And Jackson police are encouraging people to take part in their Citizens Police Academy. That begins on March 23rd, runs through March the 30th. Now, the deadline to enroll in that program is March the 13th, and you can find more information about taking part in that on our website. And work is beginning a construction of that new town square in Madison. There's a look at it. Crews working to demolish and clear that land for the new developments. The new town square will be called Madison at Main. It'll be a mix of new stores, restaurants, high end condos, and townhomes. Madison Mayor Mary Hawkins Butler says this will be Madison's crown jewel. And Mississippi Spay and Neuter receives a grant to help treat more than 600 dogs in our area. That money will go towards spay and neuter procedures for animals in low income homes in Capaya, Hines, Madison, Rankin, and Simpson counties. Now you must make an appointment with the Big Fix Clinic if you would like to take advantage of that. 
And for the latest on all these stories, plus the latest on local and national news, weather, sports, even traffic, you can always visit WJTV.com. And we love it when you engage with us on social media, Facebook at WJTV12 News, Twitter at WJTV, and Instagram at WJTV12. Plus, our news and weather apps are free in the App Store and on Google Play. Super Tuesday voting is already underway in what could go a long way to determining who will be the Democratic nominee to take on President Trump this fall. Natalie Brand reports in Alexandria, Virginia. Senator Bernie Sanders cast a vote in his home state of Vermont, one of 14 states in American Samoa voting today with roughly a third of Democratic delegates at stake. To beat Donald Trump, we are going to need to have the largest voter turnout in the history of this country. We need energy. We need excitement. I think our campaign is that campaign. Sanders has an edge in delegates and polls in key states heading into Super Tuesday, but former Vice President Joe Biden is now trying to consolidate the moderate vote. The Democrats want a nominee who's a Democrat, a lifelong Democrat, a proud Democrat, an Obama-Biden Democrat, then join us. Biden received a boost Monday night with three former presidential hopefuls throwing their support behind him. Well, I'm ending my campaign. I can't think of a better way to end it uh, than joining Vice President Biden. The 11th hour shakeup in the race forced some voters to make a last minute decision. I had wanted to vote for Pete. Virginia voter Nancy McKenna says Monday's endorsement of Biden made a difference for her. I mean, it was significant in the, in the sense that I had to make a shift, but also I think it helped me make a shift that may in the long run have been necessary. Former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg enters Super Tuesday as the wild card. Tonight will be the first test of his unorthodox campaign and unprecedented spending. The billionaire is already looking beyond Super Tuesday campaigning in Florida. I have no intention of dropping out. We're in it to win it. So is Elizabeth Warren, who voted in her home state of Massachusetts, but is expected to head to Michigan tonight. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Alexandria, Virginia. Very interesting day. Early voting has been underway for weeks in some Super Tuesday states, such as California and Texas. Many of those votes were cast before the candidates dropped out, though. So there's that. 12.07 on a gloomy Tuesday. We'll turn it back over to Jake. Yeah, we'll be headed to the polls next week. Well, today, Chills tracking some showers on Live MX 12. Not widespread, uh, but we're still seeing them out there with the cloud cover. A level one flooding risk today. Not expecting any more severe weather. Tomorrow, though, up to a level two. Slight risk for severe weather and flash flooding. I'll show you the timeline of that in future radar and the 8-day forecast. And when sunshine returns coming up, thanks for watching 12 News at Noon.